Now, as, as you begin to think through the universal priesthood of believers, I then work for a new person. I don't work for myself. I work for God. And I have to uncover uh, really thoroughly what God wants me to do. Because what God wants me to do, gang, is not what I want to do. Myself wants these things. The Spirit of God in me <laughs> wants these things. And the degree in which self becomes strong, it overpowers the Spirit, and the Spirit gets so settled away that we lose sight of the fact that this separation is right from the pit. It's right from the pit. Satan brought it so far that in the period of the Reformation, the clergy had become so corrupted that they kept the Bible in Latin so the people couldn't read it. And they said, we control all of how you think about God. And when the first Reformation hit, it hit because for the first time, the layperson was reading the Bible saying, no kidding, look at that. How come you're making me pay for sins? How come you're making me come to you to ask for forgiveness? There are no more priests. What is this? And there was a great reforming, a reformation, a going back to the correct form. Form had always been there, but had been lost, and the reformed back to the method of God. The second thing has happened that Satan has unbelievably manipulated, and that is, it used to be, and believe in those scriptures, that the work of God was done by all believers. Instead, we have separated it. And I heard some clear frustration from our speaker this morning, and I could understand and agree with what he said. On the other half of me, I was screaming bloody murder. We're pointing our finger to the clergy. No, 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 no. We point our fingers at ourselves. Why are you continuing to hire more professionals? The role that God gave to the leaders of the church, the elders of the church, was he quoted this morning from Ephesians 4, 11, and 12, to equip all of us to do the work, W-O-R-K, takes T-I-M-E, of the ministry. So this person, whether they're full-time or not, their responsibility to us is to teach me how to do it the work of the ministry. We have redefined the work as being their responsibility and not mine. So now church is being defined as a star who gets behind of their pulpit and does a performance for you as close to television quality as you can. <laughs> fancy music, pretty robes, fancy organs, and a well-executed address and you haven't been equipped to work, and you know why you haven't been equipped to work? Because you're not demanding to be equipped to work, and it's your own fault. It's your own fault. And I don't particularly think that you want to work because you don't understand that you've been bought out. Do you have a clear understanding in your own heart exactly what God expects of you to do? I mean, exactly. And are you doing it? So you just gave, I gave this past week, two weeks, probably, I don't know, too many hours. If you were to evaluate the hours that you gave in your job this past week, were they God's purposes or were they yours? Ladies and gentlemen, they're not the same. Our purposes are for money. And don't ever argue that point. That's right out of Scripture. His purposes <laughs> are the kingdom of God. 
Nothing that money buys helps, in a sense, the kingdom of God. They buy clothes. God says, don't worry about your clothes. They buy big houses. God says, don't worry about your houses. They buy food. Don't worry about your food. I mean, we're supposed to work and all that, but God keeps saying, don't. God says, seek the kingdom of God first, and all those things will be passive tense piled on you. See, when you are a slave who has a hole in your ear, like all of us have, we think we have to live like the world because our belief system isn't right. God says, no, it's my kingdom. And don't forget, I made everything you see. (laughs) You work for me first, and I will take care of all these things. That is a leap of faith to believe that, isn't it? Most of us in this room do not believe that. We are not able to trust God to do that. And therefore we do not. The people who lived at Christ's day weren't able to do it either. Some were. Most weren't. And the vast majority of us in this room, and those of you who will view this on videotape, you won't do it either. Because you lose control. This direction, you have control. Like Bill shared last night, so meaningful to all of us. I wanted my security. And God says, oh, no, 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 no. I am your security. I am your CEO. And if you do what I want, I will take care of all of your needs. Either that's true or false. And see, as we work for money, okay, as our motive and our purpose, we are building our own kingdom, which protects us from allowing God to take care of us. It, it builds walls, doesn't it? So there's no need left that God can intervene with. And therefore, we are so similar by, by nature, by how we live, by how we think, by what excites us, by the profits we make and the ways we scratch around, that the next-door neighbor really can't discern that we are a priest because we have a love of money. And when you rub a shoulders with a person who doesn't have a love of money, you're amazed at them because they have no pull for it. They just, it's irrelevant to them, almost. God will take care of me. What am I worried about? I just need to be obedient to him, and he can be trusted. The philosophy, therefore, of FCC is built upon a very bedrock theme. That bedrock theme in the last 10 minutes of our time is basically this. that you have been purchased by God's Son through His blood completely. You are His. And His best name for us is a priest. The purpose of a priest, so that you don't ever miss this, is clear in Scripture. You have God, you have man, and God has built some people in the middle. You have a prophet, you have a priest, and you have a king. The purpose of a prophet and priest are the direct opposite. The prophet takes the word of God through him and delivers it to man. A priest takes man and brings to God. A king does both directions. We are priests. Therefore, our job is to take man and bring him to God. Everything we do 
needs to be that focused. You remember, Paul? This one thing I do. That's not Paul, gang. That's for us. That's how we're supposed to live. That's what a slave does. I obey my owner, and my owner wants this. Therefore, I will give my whole effort to do that. Therefore, the evaluation of business in a philosophical basis is the business has been, has been followed closely, has been given to me by God to priest more effectively. That's the purpose of business. That the real difference on a philosophical basis between the world's purpose of business and God's purpose of business is 180 degrees different. The world's purpose of business is profit. The scriptural point of God, it's the priest. And the priesting is done one of two ways. It's either tent making or it's a platform. Tent making is when you do the work, okay, for the purpose of having enough money to pay your bills. Paul did that with making tents. That is, as long as he had money, he didn't make tents. And when he ran out of money, it was God's will for him to make tents. We have some friends in Atlanta, in my opinion, who are a beautiful illustration of tent makers. <laughs> One of them is a, a dentist. He now works three days a week. That's all he needs to work, to pay his overhead, his staff, and himself. The other days of the week, guess what he does? He priests. He doesn't sit at home. He priests. Some other people that are close friends with who use their business as a platform to priest. That is, they realize that if they seek this, this is whose responsibility? There's balance here. You are still to work hard. Have an excellent reputation. Have a dependable product. Treat your people fairly. But ladies and gentlemen, the magnificent difference is your business becomes a means to something else rather than it becomes the end. And you go do your ministry when you teach Sunday school class. <laughs> I happen to believe that the next Reformation is nudging its way over the top of the hill. I don't believe the next revival or Reformation will come from the young people. It might, but I don't think so this time. I don't think the next Reformation will come from the uh, priests, the uh, clergy the uh, religious leaders. I think the next revival or reformation will come from the business community, personally. To be honest with you, as I travel around the country, the most sensitive to God group of people that I meet anywhere are you folks. That's the honest truth. I speak in colleges all over, universities, this is back from a large two pastors' conferences. And I also speak quite a bit to business people like yourself. The Spirit of God is moving more among the business community than anywhere in our country today. The Second Reformation isn't when we get the Bible in the hands of the lay people. That's already there. The Second Reformation is when the work of God gets in the hands of the lay people. It's exactly what our speaker said a few minutes ago. It finally hit me. What on earth am I doing with my life? If you begin to live like a priest, your life will radically change.
you will begin to make decisions in business that do not make logical sense at times. Pro that's, a, that's a promise. You will have more hard times of thought as you try to change the way you think from worshiping money to serving God. And you will struggle every time you make one swing. It's not, it's not, you don't do this at one time. God realizes that change is traumatic. It is a trauma to us. And one step at a time, you begin to go in this direction. And then God says, oh, here's another one. And then you think you're done. <laughs> and God says, oh, you think you're done. Here's another one. But you're going to find when you begin to make some of those changes that you will go through some of the most exhilarating and freeing and fulfilling changes that you could have ever anticipated. The change is agony. The changed is wonderful. Freedom is here. Bondage is here. You cannot serve two masters at one time. You cannot serve two masters at one time. You will either serve the world's master or God's master, but you can't serve two. You will either love the one and in comparison hate the other. You will be loyal. I love that word. You will be loyal to one and despise the other. No man can serve God and money at the same time. May in each one of our hearts come to grips with the fact that that is a true statement. And until the love of money is rooted out of our hearts, we will never serve God.